Example 127. The Windsor Bottling Company received complaints that their 12-ounce root beer bottles contained less than 12 ounces in them. When 24 bottles are randomly selected and measured, the amounts had a mean of 11.4 ounces and a standard deviation of 0.62 ounces. Test the claim that consumers are being cheated. If the company says the sample is too small for the results to be meaningful, is that reasoning valid here? All right, so let's talk about the first thing in the problem, which is what technique are we supposed to use? Well, it says test the claim, right? So it's a hypothesis test, and it says test the claims consumers are being cheated, and that's linked to the amount of soda or the average amount of soda in their bottles. So it's a test about the mean. So let's go ahead and write the claim down then. The claim is going to be that the mean amount is less than 12 ounces in these root beer bottles. The reason why it's that as the claim is because we're trying to say that the consumers are being cheated here in the problem, and to be cheated would mean to get less than what the bottle claims, right? The bottle says 12 ounces, but in this case it seems they're getting less than 12 ounces of soda. All right, so now that we know that, our next step is going to be to get HO and HA, so the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. Looking at the symbol involved in the claim, I'm going to say the claim and HA in this example are the same. And that means that the null hypothesis is the opposite of that, so greater than or equal to. This basically boils down to the consumer group's argument versus the company's argument. The company is trying to try to say, hey, we give you more than or at least or equal to 12 ounces or more than 12 ounces or at least 12 ounces. That's the same way to say this thing. And then HA is saying, hey, the consumer group is arguing that the mean is less than 12. So that's the total um, dispute, and we're going to try to just settle it by figuring out whether HO is true or not. And to do that, we're going to need some data. So we're going to collect data for the problem. We're going to take this right from the problem itself. And we should have these values whenever we're running a hypothesis test about the mean. So let's look at N here. It says that Windsor Bottling Company received complaints that their 12 ounce Rupert bottles contain less than 12 ounces in them when 24 bottles are randomly selected. So N is 24 in that case, right? And then it says that they had a mean amount of 11.4 ounces and a standard deviation of 0.62 ounces. The alpha is not given. There's no significance level. Well, normally in court cases, just like in statistics, the default alpha level is 0.05. So whenever a problem comes up in the court system that relates to statistics and hypothesis testing, they will choose 5% as a significance level. That is also the guideline I gave you when we are not given a significance level. So we're going to use 5%. All right, so we have the claim, we have HO, we have HA, we have the data. Our next step is the test stat, right? Now, we would normally use Z, right, as our test stat, but here our sample size is small, so we're going to go ahead and use T as our test stat. The rest of the formula is basically the same. It's the sample mean minus the value from HO, then we'll have S over the square root of N. So that's S as in the sample standard deviation over the square root of N. Okay, so the sample mean is 11.4. The value that we find in HO is 12. The standard deviation is 0 0.62, and we're dividing by the square root of 24. Okay, so let's see if the difference between 11.4 ounces and 12 ounces is significant here. So, we're going to put the top in parentheses, 11.4 minus 12, close it up. Divide by the bottom in parentheses, 0.62, divided by the square root of 24. When we do that, we get minus 4.74. That's pretty extreme. Minus 4.74. That's a pretty extreme test stat, indicating that perhaps the company is cheating the consumer. But to be sure, we have to use a critical value and compare this against our critical value. So. We're going to draw a bell curve, and on the bell curve, we're going to label a rejection region. Based on HA, the symbol is pointing to the left. That means it's a left-tailed test, and we will say that if, you land, if our test stat lands over here to the left, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. On the t-distribution, the center is also at zero, so we're trying to figure out what critical value is here. It'll be negative because it's to the left of zero. And the way we're going to do that, it's just a one-tail test, so we're going to look up alpha in just one tail. So in this one tail, we expect the area to be 0 0.05. Let's go see what we get when we look that up on our t-table. We're going to look up 0 0.05 with, don't forget the degrees of freedom here, 23 degrees of freedom. 
So let's go ahead and write down underneath here what this is. This is T.05, 23 degrees of freedom. That's what that number will eventually be. So let's go to our chart and look that up. Okay, so we're looking at 0.05 in one tail, and we want to go down to we see degrees of freedom 23. And when we do that, we find the answer 1.714. Okay, so we find the answer 1.714, 1.714. Okay, so that the critical value of 1.714 and a test stat of negative 4.74, this is clearly over here in the rejection region, right? And because it's in the rejection region, we're going to conclude that we should reject the null. Remember, we're always testing the null hypothesis, so in here we conclude that we reject it and therefore we support the alternative. Remember that goes hand in hand. If you do one, you do the other. All right, now let's look at the claim. The claim is the same as the alternative, right? That means we should use this phrase for the response to the question. So we're gonna say the sample data support the claim, right? The sample data support the claim. It's the claim that what? Consumers are being cheated, right? The claim that consumers are being cheated. So what we're saying here is that basically the consumers are right. There's not enough soda in these cans on average. It's below 12 ounces. The can says 12 ounces. doesn't seem to have 12 ounces in there though on average. Let's take a look at this last part of the problem. If the company says the sample is too small for the results to be meaningful, is that reasoning valid here? So what the company's trying to do is to try to say the small sample size prevents this result from being valid or meaningful. Well, that's actually not correct here. The small sample size does not harm the problem in this case. It could, though, in some cases. Let's try to explain when it would be a problem and versus when it wouldn't be a problem. Small sample size lowers the power of the test, the hypothesis test. So when you use a, a Z procedure instead of a T procedure, you're using a more powerful procedure. A more powerful procedure means that it's easier to reject false null hypotheses. So it's harder for a T test to reject the null if the null is false. It's harder for it to do that. It makes it more difficult for the T test to reject the null hypothesis when the sample size is small. So basically a small sample size here actually makes it less likely that the consumer group can reject the null hypothesis, which is what the consumer group wants to do here because they want to show the company is cheating the consumers. So the fact that they were able to accomplish that task in spite of the fact that they had a small sample size, that actually indicates that most likely the, you know, the, the company is cheating the consumers, right? Because even with a small sample size, they were able to reject the null. In a close borderline case, a small sample size could be enough that you would be unable to reject the null. And then if that were to have happened, the consumer group could have argued that maybe it was because they used a small sample size, they didn't have enough power to reject the company's claim. But in this case, that argument uh, isn't necessary because the consumer group accomplished their task they were able to show the company is cheating the consumers, and that means their results are perfectly valid. So the only pop possible criticism that can be leveled against a small sample hypothesis test is that it's not powerful enough to detect false null hypotheses sometimes, and so that if you didn't reject the null, people might criticize it and say, well, you were unable to reject the null here because the sample size was too small. I don't think that argument holds any weight here since obviously we rejected the null. So in this case, the company is dead wrong, and it looks like, in fact, they are cheating the consumers.